Here are a few fun things you can do with shapes in GameLab on code.org. So you'll notice I just have a draw loop to start. I'm going to be spending most of my time in here in the drawing toolbox. The first one I'm going to grab is line, which by default is just this. It starts at point zero zero here, and it ends at point four hundred four hundred. So what I'd like to do is replace uh, I'm going to leave the starting position at 0, 0, and replace its ending position with wherever my mouse is, which is world mouse X and world mouse Y. Let's try that. So that's kind of a cool effect. Now you'll notice if this is not in the draw loop, you're not going to get anything because your mouse is off the screen when you start. Okay, so let's advance that a little bit and just say we're only going to draw that line if the mouse is down. So I'm moving around and nothing's happening, but when I press, I'm going to get some. That allows us a little more control. And it might be fun to change some of the colors here. So we're going to add a stroke. So now we've got some blue lines. Uh, and now we're going to put a random color in there. So I'm going to click out to get the RGB. And then I'm going to put a random number in each of the three positions. And now this is off screen a little bit, but I want it to go from 0 to 255 on each one. Okay. So now I'm getting sort of a rainbow effect. Which is fun. I may save that for later. Okay, another option is you could... Um, start at your mouse and go to a certain position so now we're just going this way or you could always go to the center of the screen change these to 200 all right that's kind of fun hey you get the idea let's see what else we can do Instead of using line, uh, we can use point. This one's kind of cool. So first we'll just draw a point and we'll put it at the mouse's X and Y. So you can see those dots are kind of following my mouse. It's not beautiful, but it's kind of neat. Uh, and then let's add another point. For this one, let's say 400 minus the mouse is X. I'll just type it in there. And for the Y, we'll do 400 minus mouse world dot mouse Y. So then you get, um, I don't know if you can see that, sort of a symmetrical effect. Let me start over. You see it up there? That actually wasn't what I intended, but it's still pretty cool. Uh, let's leave this one over here. I'm going to leave the X alone, but on the Y I'm going to take off the 400 lines. So it's going to mirror my mouse exactly on the Y. So it looks like a dog. Anyway, you get the idea. So that's something we can do with points. Let's get rid of those. Uh, what else can we draw? Um, let's do an ellipse. Okay, so these 
first two positions are its x and its y. We'll just leave it in the center of the screen. And this time I'm going to tie its width to the mouse and its height to the y value of the mouse. So we get this cool effect. If we go over here to the corner, we get as wide and as high as possible. If we go up on the y, we shrink them. If we go left this way, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, I experimented with changing colors on this one, and it was sort of seizure-inducing, so I'm going to leave that alone. So that's ellipses. Uh, now let's mess with the regular polygon. Okay, so I'll make it a little bigger. Okay, so our number of sides is here. Um, so if we tie the number of sides to the mouse, you're going to see it, it almost always looks like a circle. You'd have to get very close to the edge over here to see anything else. So what we could do is say uh, the mouse value divided by 20 or so. Well, that's kind of fun, especially if we change the color each time, but I'm not going to go, yeah, I am, I'm going to go through that again. So I'm going to fill with RGBs with random numbers. You've already seen this once, so I apologize. Maybe I'll just randomize the first, I'll randomize the red content. I'll leave the other two alone. Well, that's not beautiful. Let's make these zeros. Uh, kind of unpleasant, so let's take that out. Okay, so messing with polygons more, maybe we can just make the sizes go up on their own without the mouse. So I'm going to make a variable called size and we'll set it to 3 would be the smallest amount for a polygon. And then we'll put our, our regular polygon back in. And instead of a number of sides we'll just put size. So let's try that out and see if we get a triangle. Okay, that looks good. And then uh, in here let's increment the size. Size equals size plus one. That happened pretty quickly, so let's slow the frame rate down to maybe three. That way we can watch it happen. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's add a background in so that we're not seeing all of them on top of each other. And let's make it bigger. Alright, but you'll notice pretty quickly it's still rounding out to a circle. So it would be nice if when it got so big it shrunk back down. So maybe we should say um, if uh, size is greater than say 10, then we want to shrink, right? Um, watch this. It seems like I could shrink it once size are greater than 10, but you'll see it gives us a little bit of a hiccup. We're going to get up to 10 sides, and then it sort of freezes. And if you watch size, it's stuck there. So... Um, we're going to have to do something else. It keeps increasing the size and decreasing the size. Uh, you could perhaps uh, do that, but then you're going to see, watch watch what happens here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10, 11, 10. It's sticking there. Right? So we need another way to do this. And 
the way I found is to make another variable. So we need to control the direction of what's going on. So we'll start by growing. We just make a variable called direction and give it grow. And we'll say if, um, if direction double equals grow, then size equals size plus one. Right. But if size is greater than 10, I'm just going to park that there for a second. If size gets greater than 10, then we need to make direction equal shrink. And then I'll put this up here so they're together. Then we need another if. We'll say if direction double equals shrink. size equals size minus one. Um, let's see what that does. I think we need one more. So it gets big, it gets small, and then it disappears. And you can see here the size continues to shrink. So we need one more conditional that controls what happens when it gets to the bottom. So if size is less than three, we need direction to go back to grow. Okay, let's try that. Gets bigger, gets smaller. Did you notice that little blink? Watch the size right here. It's getting down to two because I said less than three and there is no two for a polygon. So we need to go less than four. That'll get rid of our blink. Okay, those are just a few things you can do with shapes and the mouse in GameLab.